I'm back for some nonsense. Um, I guess not. Okay, no hood today. I'm back for some nonsense. So, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about Jeffree Star. Because I can. And because I had a thought. And I wanted to share my thought. And I was hoping that somebody here would care about my thought more than my cat. Because <laughs> they don't care about me anything I have to say unless it is kibble bed treat that's all I care about oh and toy so that's that and I'm so glad I have my notes because uh, it says at the back which which is the point of the whole fucking video so I'm glad I titled my notes that the point of the video like a smart person Jeffree Star sells yak meat you're probably like why do I care well you probably don't and if you don't, you're probably going to leave, and that's fine. Anyways, Jeffree Star started to get selling, <laughs> announced that he was going to be selling Yak Me, I believe, on the 28th of May, and people got upset. Now, to explain why people got upset, we have to go to August 4th. Uh, yes, I know my fingers are weird. 2021. Jeffree Star's company, Star Yak Ranch, files for trademarks in every single category. Nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares. September 1st rolls around. Cat Tembarge, formerly of Insider, currently I believe of CNN, um, came out with a story announcing all of the categories that Jeffree Star had trademarked Star Yak Ranch in. This included like yarn making from their fur. Um, edible pet treats, edible food, butchering, leathering, yarn service, cheese making, stud services. And she raised the question like, well, what is he doing with his yaks? Because at that point, like, nobody knew. He moved to Casper, Wyoming. He bought a yak ranch. He was buying yaks. Nobody really knew what, what was going on. So when people saw that he trademarked all of those categories, they jumped to, to the immediate conclusion that he was going to be operating in all of those categories, which is to which is a fair assumption. I believe it was September 2nd. Jeffree Star makes a statement on Instagram in his stories. So a 24 hour story is how he responded to this. But thankfully, screen captures a thing stating that just because he had trademarked in all of those categories does not mean he was going to be operating in all of those categories and he had trademarked them for protection, which makes sense. One thing that I studied a great deal of in college was business because I was looking at opening my own business. I decided not to because bleh. Um, it was not it was not my road at the time. That was not my journey at the time. <laughs> and one of the things that we did talk a lot about was trademarking because you do want to trademark your company. You also naming, you want to be able to trademark the name so that you as a company are protected. So if we continue and we just use Jeffree Star as an example, if he had only trademarked his yak corporation company whatever ranch in the categories that he was immediately intending on doing such as um i don't know petting zoo services or cheese making or yarn making you know those types of things um sure it is possible that later he could go in and trademark his company under he could get those trademarks in the future if he chose to expand into them the thing with that is is that costs a lot of money costs time but the other thing is is that while you're deciding other people can and do come in and kind of like trademark steal 
So they'll come in and they'll trademark, they'll be like, oh, Starry Acre Ranch isn't trademarked in any of these com in any of these categories. I'm going to trademark it. If a competitor came in who took over the like stud services um trademark, like if that was the only one Jeffree Star didn't do, he, he took the stud services trademark. Now we have two Star Yak ranches. One does stud services and one does like the majority of everything else. You know, that kind of a thing. So what happens when the stud service, the not Jeffrey Star Yak Ranch gets bad reviews and people start talking about how terrible it is and how awful it is and how he's a ripoff and blah 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 and is like tanking the reputation of Star Yak Ranch in the stud services market. Well that is gonna bleed over because everybody's gonna see Star Yak Ranch and then they're gonna go Star Yak Ranch and then they're gonna go those two are connected. So it did did make total sense for him to do it as a protection move. Okay? Now May twenty eighth. He announces his yak meat pop-up 12 hours before the event. 12 hours? Like, what the heck? I don't know. I don't, he says 12 hours. I don't know. And he posts it on the Star Yak Ranch Instagram. Permanent post. Not a story. N permanent post. It is a permanent post. You can go there. You can look at it now. And it is a picture of meat. Now, from September to the time of May, we hadn't really heard anything about what Jeffrey was doing with his yaks because in, Jan in September 2nd, he came out and he said nothing is happening to his yaks except for loving and brushing and feeding them and that he had only trademarked those categories for protection purposes to avoid the scenario I had previously described. We went from loving, brushing, feeding in September to now it is May to, hey, come buy my yak meat. Now, there's a connection here. How did he go from one to the other? Like, where is the road between? How do these two dots connect? Because, like, one's over here, and then this one's, like, o over here over here so how did those come to meet um and I, that I think that's what people are mad about they don't know how that happened there's no storyline if that makes sense there's no anything he just came out afterwards very very old school Jeffrey style, if I might, may say so. Very old school Jeffrey. I could give one fuck what you thought. You sound like a complete piece of shit and your existence is irrelevant to my world. Get some yak and take a Xanax. He has stepped back into those very toxic habits he had when he faced backlash for announcing that he was doing butchering services. So he immediately went back to, I have to attack, which does not show a lot of growth in my opinion. And I know I'm waggling my finger, but I'm just like, Nyah. He did this long Instagram story. Again, it's 24 hours, which really confuses me why he does everything in 24 hour chunks, which is, I think, is the problem here. I think that's the problem. Adam McIntyre has a video with the screen rec with a screen recording and his opinions on it, and I do enjoy it, and I do su suggest you watch it. I will link it in a comment below. And... 
Jeffrey's I feel like Jeffrey's yelling at me through the whole thing. Like, I'm getting yelled at because I'm confused. Has that ever happened where you, like, asked a question and then you just get, like, yelled at? You're just like, that. I appreciate you answering my question, but can you not scream at me while you do it? And that's what it felt like watching that Snapchat story where he explains that he changed his mind. He started learning about where his food came from. And that's fine. That's great. That's awesome. Figure out where your food's coming from. He realized that that's not... He didn't like what he was doing to his body. Or at least that's what he's saying. And I can only go by what he's saying. So he says... He didn't like what he was doing with his body, so he started making changes, and he learned about how great yak meat was, how healthy it was, how wonderful it was, and that kind of thing. And it's like, that's awesome. We're all making changes in our lives, and sometimes they come spontaneously, and sometimes they don't. Now, I noticed, I remembered, that when he addressed it in September, he did an Instagram story which only lasts 24 hours. And then when he addressed it this time, even though the post announcing the pop-up is permanent, he once again only addressed it in an Instagram story that is only up for 24 hours. And he told people to screen record it. Well, sweetie, there's no reason for us to screen record it if you make it a permanent post. I get that that's not exactly on brand and it's not exactly your look, but that's called taking accountability. And being, like, growing up is being like, yeah, I fucked up. I made a mistake. Um, I changed my mind. That kind of a thing. If this is how, if this is what you want people to remember, make it permanent. Which made me ask a question. What if he did make an announcement that he was going to start butchering his yaks, but he only did it? as a 24-hour Instagram story and I was thinking about that after I had written all of my notes and I was like do I, would I end the video there and I was like I guess we do because I don't know I don't personally know how I would go about finding that but tea spill the beautiful and wonderful tea spill came in with the receipts and the win. There is a video. There is a 24-hour story that Jeffree Star had posted addressing people asking him if he was going to do butchering services and he said yes. He said yes. <laughs> so his own desire to maintain a specific image is what got him to this problem. He never announced permanently, he never made like a public permanent post saying, hey guys, Staryak Ranch is looking at expanding into butchering services. I've been doing a lot of studying or I've learned a lot about where our meat comes from and I want to change that. You know, that kind of a thing. He, like, he never, he explained it in a 24 hour Instagram story and then got mad when nobody remembered <laughs> months later. Sorry about that. We have a little guest. We have a little guest. She wanted in. So I had to stop so I could let her in. This is the grumpiest of grumps. She's so cute. Uh, she's not actually my cat. She is a neighbor's cat. And her neighbor and I talk semi-regularly. And she knows that she's over here all the time. So, I didn't... She's just a wanderer. T-Spill posted a video. And in that video contained the receipt that I thought was missing. The missing piece of the puzzle. Which was... The, the information that people needed, which was 
Jeffree Star had changed his mind and decided to start um, going into the meat industry. Now, I'm not going to talk about the conflict idea of the cosmetic company being vegan because it's not related. It's just, it's not, it's just not related because his goal was always inclusivity, which is what he says. His words, not mine. He claims his goal was always inclusivity and that would include making sure that people who are vegan and cruelty free and who live by those like tenants would be able to buy his products if they so chose to. But he always ate meat like the whole time that I have known of him in since 2018. He has always ate meat. So there's that. So, that, to maintain a specific image, Jeffree Star will do do things that may affect his image in a temporary format, a Instagram story. Using those methods, there is an inherent opacity to them because they're only visible for a short period of time. So anybody who comes in after it has gone is not going to see it. Therefore, they're not going to have the information to go on. If you prevent the information from being known, i.e. through temporary posts, then yeah, people are going to get angry because they're going to be like, they're going to... A bunch of people are going to be like, we knew about this. And you see that a lot. You you always see the two camps. There's the, we knew about this. It's totally fine. Why are you upset? And the, when did this become a thing? The last thing you said was a regurgitated quote, according to Jeffree Star. And that's the problem. If you are making a big business change that is so connected to a big life change why aren't you sharing that first of all second of all if you are sharing it why is it temporary why wouldn't you want to mark the day you announced that uh star yak ranch was expanding into new services like that is a momentous day for a business you're expanding into butchering services and stud services that's a huge thing which branches off the questions of if you're not celebrating those things was that the plan to begin with and if it was the plan to begin with why couldn't you just be honest about it why couldn't you just be honest that you were like, yeah, we are planning on expanding and doing butchering services? Why couldn't you just say that and be like, yeah, we trademarked it because that's something I'm interested in. I Because now you have people speculating. Why did you hide it? What are your purposes? Was this the plan to, beginning, to begin with? Or did you just change your mind? Like, what is going on here? When you leave things in a smoke cloud, it does nothing but cause confusion. And when people get confused, they get angry. And that's why he's having issues. His lack of transparency about his intentions and who he is as a person, which we see come up in the text messages of, he doesn't want to be that person but he's still acting like that person but he's not being honest and it's like why why can't you just say yeah i bought a ranch because i was looking at business new business opportunities and i thought yaks were awesome why couldn't you just say that there's no shame in wanting to expand businesses and learn more and like wanting to change your life there's no shame in that there's no problem with that is when you try to hide it in 24 hour posts that people have an issue because now you get called 
inauthentic and people call you a liar and people say all these things that you don't like when you could have avoided all of this when at the beginning you said yes we are we you could have said yes we trademarked in that category because we are looking into providing those services and you could and if people were still mad you could be like i can keep you updated or you could listen to why or you could explain your reasonings why or you could just show us just show us you're posting pictures on instagram like why don't show us what you can like don't take us in the, the gross bits but like show us the behind the scenes of it be like okay yes this is the process that me has to go through to get usda approved this is the processes that we have in place at our ranch like that would be a huge selling point because people could see from beginning to end how the animals are treated but you didn't do that did you and with that i'm very confused i'm a little less confused now that i've gotten my thoughts out and i've been able to work through them a little bit hopefully that makes sense to you hopefully you're a little less confused and i don't know what's going to happen from here so Bye. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got nothing.